I think the energy question is the most threatening question to our society. And uh, I'm just shocked, but how little is going on compared to what should go on to find a solution for the future. I can't remember when I was your age, but uh, in my lifetime the population has uh, tripled and the energy use has gone up by a factor of almost 10. And all of our well-being these days is based on this energy which we use. And so this cannot go on if we keep on increasing the population and increasing the energy use as we have been doing. Uh, the known resources of energy and 80% of the energy which we use now is fossil fuels. These fossil fuels will be gone in about 60 years. So what will people do then? Right now their whole life depends on using up this fossil fuel. When the fossil fuels are gone People will have no choice but to uh, adjust in some more reasonable way. But my fear is that the thing will happen so rapidly, the, uh, the catastrophe will come so rapidly. Everything now depends on our using, I mean, the, the ability for people to survive in our society depends on the use of this energy. And when it's not there, and it will happen rather fast, that it will disappear, or is happening rather fast, and to make a reasonable replacement, it takes time. You can't do it in 10 years. It takes at least 30 years or something like that, maybe more. What are the options? Yes. I don't see no way of extending these renewables so much and one renewable which is now pushed very much is wind energy and another one is solar panels and they have a problem namely that wind energy you can only have there is a, the windmills in the best places where you can put windmills, they operate about 40% of the time. And what you do the other 60% of the time if you don't have any fossil fuels? And I asked myself the question of what can you do if you want to get rid if, of the use of fossil fuels and leave some fossil fuels maybe for your children or m for my children. And... Uh, there I see a difficulty with wind and solar panels which are very much promoted these days because uh, I don't know how to store electricity and these things produce electricity directly but I don't know how to store it for the time when the sun doesn't shine or when the wind doesn't blow. And <clears throat> nuclear energy is, uh, for me, not the best alternative because also uranium is uh, in very limited supply. So people don't know how long they can go with uranium if they want to really use nuclear. And it has some other problems, for instance, uh, people haven't managed to figure out how they want to store the nuclear waste and uh, there are some problems with uh, possible use of uh, nuclear facilities for uh, making nuclear weapons. 
So uh, I prefer nuclear to fossil fuels. But if I really want to find a solution, uh, I'm not focusing on nuclear. Okay, I have no, uh, nothing really against nuclear energy. And in any case, nuclear energy for me is much better to use than fossil fuels. I'm not afraid of uh, nuclear accidents because we've had nuclear energy around for quite a while and the number of people who have been killed for me and uh, I think you can make the argument quite clearly is much less than uh, the number of coal miners who have died in producing uh, coal or also in oil wells people get killed and uh, I'm not afraid of uh, nuclear accidents compared to other things, people, uh, the accidents in whatever you do. Uh, there is a problem around which, well, there more, more than one problem. One problem with nuclear is that uranium, which is uh, all nuclear plants now use uh, in the first place, uranium. Some of the uranium is uh, uh, power plants and produce plutonium, which you can also use, but it starts with uranium. And uh, this uranium is limited. And as best I know, it's really quite limited. Uh, another thing is nuclear waste. How do you store it? And uh, people propose but I think you could store it, but nobody wants this uh, nuclear waste in his backyard and countries haven't been able to solve that problem. Uh, to the extent to which uranium is uh, limited, people have been, posing, been proposing to make uh, thorium breeders. There's much more thorium apparently and you can breed uh, 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 proper material using thorium uh, in breeder reactors. I'm focusing on the only thing which I know and that is uh, so-called thermal solar energy where you heat up some fluid to a high temperature with solar energy and you do this in the deserts and a few percent of the desert would be enough for the energy for the whole world as we now use it and uh, uh, you store it overnight you store the heat in some way and there are technologies for storing the heat it's not absolutely convenient but it's possible and then you have 95 percent of the time when the sun shines in the desert you have uh, electrical energy when you convert this heat to uh, electrical energy with some kind of uh, steam turbine and right now this technology is known you can do it and with presently known technology it costs about uh, twice as much as uh, fossil fuel uh, electricity production but in the future fossil fuels will be more expensive and this technology will certainly improve because very little has been done to explore it up until now so that I think uh, it could easily be foreseen that if one really would try to explore this technology that uh, even within 10 years it would be cheaper than present fossil fuel but uh, people are not really pursuing it I don't really know why I think it would there's a very good reason and it isn't that expensive it costs some money but compared to all the money we spend on energy production it's uh, a trivial amount that would be necessary to really de explore this technology in a reasonable way. 
Yes, for me, uh, for Europe, uh, the thing which would be the most beneficial is the development of this uh, thermal solar technology. And, uh, well, I mean, for the world, but uh, Europe included. But a uh, particular project for Europe, which is absolutely uh, clear to me should be done, which is not being done, uh, which this Desert Tech Industrial Initiative was really proposing, is that in the African deserts, uh, in North African deserts, we install uh, some pilot power plants to test different technologies uh, and transmitting them to Europe, transmitting the energy they produce to Europe. And as nearly as I can tell, this would require an initial investment of the order of uh, 30 billion euro something like that because you can't make very small ones because to transmit it to Europe you need transmission power lines and you can't build very low power power lines across the oceans and over long distances. You have to make it worthwhile, you have to have a certain minimum and I think a, th a, 30, uh, a 30 billion project to make maybe uh, 5 gigawatts of solar power which you transmit to Europe uh, would uh, would be a minimum size project and you would get most of your money back because the five gigawatts over 20 years is uh, quite a bit but uh, it's not being done but such a pilot project using different technologies would be a, a very uh, clear step in the right direction. Well, I think right now with the limited uh, resources which have been put to its development, mostly in Spain, the cost is about uh, a factor two, more than fossil fuel costs now. And the uh, the cost is about one half for the uh, concentration of the solar energy into thermal energy and uh, the other half is divided more or less equally in the transmission networks. By the way, the transmission, how to do it is known, the technology, nothing has to be invented and it's not likely that anything very much better can be invented but the storage uh, is uh, very little has been tested and certainly one can hope that uh, improvements will be made and uh, the other th uh, part is the uh, converting of the thermal energy into electrical energy that's normal steam uh, turb turbines would be used and that's also known but the storage is not known. Uh, it, it has not been really explored in an adequate way. And also, the best medium for what you uh, what you heat up with the material that's best is also has to be studied more. Uh, what do you do for for the? Uh, energy for transport, which is, by the way, as best I know, the energy used for transport now is uh, maybe th something like 30%. It's not the bulk, but it's a good fraction, clearly. You need uh, energy, but you also need coal. If you don't have any coal, I don't know how to do it. But uh, there is carbon around in CO2, for instance, and you can, with energy, you can convert CO2 into methane. But it's not very, uh, very cheap in energy. It takes a lot of energy to make 
given amount of energy of uh, in the CH4, I mean, you lose a lot of energy. So what the method is of using thermal solar for making a transport fuel, I've not tried to study. But it's a good question. Clearly it's a problem. About 10 years ago, or maybe it's a little less than 10 years, especially in Germany, a big uh, mediatic uh, go by some 10 of uh, big companies like Siemens and uh, uh, two of the four big German uh, electricity producers. There's something they call Desert Tech Industrial Initiative, which was very much covered in the press, where they proposed to really explore this technology, just getting energy from the desert to Europe. And I'm sorry, I'm focusing on Europe. I live in Europe. And uh, in fact, they've done nothing. And uh, in the 10 years since, and how can they be convinced and come out to the press with a clear conviction that something here should be done? And they are really interested in doing something, and they would also benefit to the extent to which they are, they would be involved in producing this energy, and they would profit from future development of this um, of this uh, technology. But they've done zero, and why? That's your question, and I don't know the answer. It seems. Uh, <coughs> that uh, it's clearly of uh, there's a clear need and it would be benefit beneficial to them, and also I think governments would support it, but industrial uh, uh, push in the direction would be the uh, way in which then the governments could involve and help them, but. Uh, it's not happening, and I don't know why. It's a f clearly a fault of our uh, economic and of our political systems, because I think we should do it, and we're not doing it, so it's somebody's fault. The public is what it is, and is only interested in the democratic countries at least. It's interested in tomorrow, not in the day after tomorrow. And here's a problem which is a long-range problem. And I don't trust the public any more than I trust anybody else. I would trust. In uh, our governments now are national. We don't have a global government. It would be easier if we had a global government because if you were German and you do something, it costs you some money. On the other hand, the benefit that Germany gets from something that Germany spends money on is uh, divided by the fraction of the population which is German compared to the global one. So Germany has 50 million, but the global population is 6 billion. So that's a factor of 120. And so it's hard for the government to decide to spend the money if it only gets a 1% benefit. But there have been international meetings where the different countries try to get together and formulate a policy. The most famous one was in Copenhagen about 10 years ago. But one of the problems is that uh, different countries have different perspectives. If you're an American, you want to keep up the f uh, what you've got in America, which is the most uh, flagrant misuse of energy anywhere. If you're in China, you want to uh, increase the well-being of the Chinese, who are much more poor now than many other parts of the of the world, but which can see themselves improving their conditions using present resources. And uh, clearly, these problems don't help, but. I think, nevertheless, the problems are there, and uh, 
I mean, the, the, the challenge is there and we should uh, be capable of facing it, but we're not. Well, for me, Fukushima made no impression. I, I, I mean, here was a tsunami, the good Lord sometimes does something which was unexpected and there was an accident. Uh, about 10,000 people got killed just with the onrushing waters and as best I know not even a hundred people got killed because of the uh, radioactivity produced in the nuclear accident. So for me Fukushima has no impact on how I view these things. But it, uh, the Fukushima thing has been used by the uh, nuclear phobes, the people who are afraid of anything nuclear, as, uh, and has been used very successfully, but in my opinion, in an uh, irrational way. They just use the fear of people to make them now afraid of the nuclear because here something happened which was clearly unpleasant. This is my answer to Fukushima. Uh, Mrs. Merkel, the Chancellor, uh, who is a physicist and who I think therefore understands what the real issues are, followed the uh, anti-nuclear phobes uh, to, uh, in a decision for Germany to get rid of nuclear energy stations of nuclear power plants within a rather short year, which is fairly expensive for Germany because to replace it costs some money. But what was said at the time when the government decided this is they will try to replace it by renewable energies. On the other hand, and they knew it at the time when they made this mediatic statement, uh, this is not possible uh, to use possible uh, re renewable installations and what they're doing in fact is using coal and gas new, uh, new newly uh, created power plants to replace the uh, the nuclear power plants by the way my guess is that even so they have agreed to get rid of nuclear power in that rather short time they won't do it. They will decide later on when they see how expensive it is to replace it to, uh, to keep some of these nuclear plants a bit longer. But uh, for me it was clearly a bad decision but Germany made it given the pressure from the large part of the population which is uh, afraid of nuclear. And why didn't the French do it? And the French, their nuclear power installations are much bigger than the German. They are more like 70 or 80 percent. I don't know the exact number. And so it would be much more expensive and almost unthinkable for the French to do it. And so they couldn't get themselves to uh, it's inconceivable for you to uh, to really just bang bang uh, get rid of that. I don't link the two. I think that uh, the two are different, and one thing is to want energy. Another thing is to want uh, nuclear weapons. And I'm not afraid of nuclear energy because it makes 
it more easy to make nuclear weapons. I think people who want nuclear weapons, for Iran right now wants nuclear weapons, and I think they have every right to want nuclear weapons, given that they're threatened by other nations' nuclear weapons. Uh, but I think their nuclear energy policy has no bearing on their, the work they're willing to do to try to make nuclear weapons. Okay, I'm very concerned about nuclear... <coughs> or the, the threat posed by nuclear weapons. And for me, the only solution and this is held by, I think, this point of view, by essentially all of the physicists I know. The only solution is to get rid of nuclear weapons globally. And this would be possible. And I think the country which really is responsible for what goes on in the world is America. America has maybe the largest arsenal and it insists that nuclear weapons are essential for its security. America, American government is very much uh, dominated by the Pentagon and one example was for instance, Obama now, when he uh, stood for his first election, he came, there's a famous Prague speech, where he came out for global nuclear disarmament, very clearly. And, uh, in fact, he has done very little. If America, in my opinion, if America would push for global nuclear disarmament, I think other countries would have to follow, even Russia. Russia is the most interesting other uh, case of people who insist that they want nuclear weapons. Uh, right now, it's for Russia the only remnant of the Soviet superpower status. In other armaments, they no longer can make that pretension. But even R Russia, in my opinion, would go along, and there's no question in my mind that China or India, I mean, China has nuclear weapons because America has them, and uh, because Russia has them and India has nuclear weapons because China has them and Pakistan has them because India has them. So if America insists on getting rid of them, all the countries will follow. I think people can convince themselves if they really want to get rid of nuclear weapons that they can do it. I am Jack Steinberger. I am a physicist and I am 91 years old.